Hello and welcome back to The Wandering Wind. I just got done watching probably one of the best fan films that have been made in the last five or so years. And that is the Voldemort Rise of the Air or Origins of the Air um, <laughs> by, I forget what studios, but damn, it was amazing. Okay, so I'm going to do a cursory review first of all, and then once I get into the spoilers of the story, my friend River over here is going to pop up, and then that's going to show you that spoilers are ahead, and therefore, beware, okay, beware. Okay, so first of all, I want to say technically the movie is great for a low-budget film from an independent film company. I tell you what, I've seen pretty good stuff in the past. This was definitely in the top 10 as far as film editing and filmmaking goes. Definitely one of my, one of my new favorite fan films. Definitely some of the best um, storyboarding and um, scene direction that I've had. <laughs> probably ever seen the granted the special effects are much less high quality than what you'd get in the actual potter films but considering they're on a budget even that was very very high quality for what they're working with and for so anyway also the storyline did follow very closely to the canonical events and actually was approved by Warner, Warner Brothers Studios. So I guess that means that they consider this kind of canonical. Anyway, um, I'll get into the story here in a second. But, um, and so otherwise, the cinematography was great. The acting is, was top notch for what you'd get in a low-budget, independent film kind of stuff. I mean, these guys aren't messing around when they make a Potter fan film. I tell you what, I hope to see much more from these guys in the future. I thought stuff like For the Greater Good was a great film, but this blows that out of the water. I mean, <laughs> okay, so... Now, let's get into the spoilers, so River, come on up. Um, first of all, let's talk about the core characters, all right? So we have Grisha McLagan, um, Tom Riddle, Lazarus from the House of Hufflepuff, and basically, these four friends, these four characters, are um, the four heirs... <sighs> of the four founders of Hogwarts. Basically, um, we have Tom and Grisha as Slytherin and Gryffindor, and then um, Lazarus and I forget the fourth guy's names, but Lazarus was the heir of Hufflepuff, and then it, it, cover, it kind of covers Tom's Hogwarts years as well as um, the first portion of his um rise to power before everything started really coming to a head. In fact, the furthest along that we hear as far as timeline wise was um this one German officer talking with what I'm assuming is a young Igor Kark Karkarov, um, stating that they're calling themselves Death Eaters now. So Obviously, very early into the first war, the first major um, wizarding war with um, Voldemort and everything. So, clearly not that far into the story. But, okay, so Grisha in the opening scenes is seen busting into a, an or headquarters or or um, warehouse looking for of all things, the diary of Tom Riddle. The thing is, she's actually been working with um, Dumbledore closely to try and figure out what the hell it is that Tom's up to because 
This is after he's murdered Hepzibah Smith and then disappeared off the radar and started his own cult and everything. Basically, you're kind of seeing the story of Voldemort's rise through the eyes of basically his best friend, kind of. Although, really, it's more like his uh, lovelorn lo love interest because she was in love with him. He didn't love her. And, you know, things just got to the point to where um, she just wanted to save her friend. And I think that's admirable, but of course we know that um, storyline never came to be. And in fact, um, basically the storyline goes through um, Hepzibah Smith dying and then um, him going, uh, Voldemort going after the other three heirs. And towards the end of the film, we get a twist ending where um, the character that we thought was Grisha McLagan, who I'm assuming is <laughs> a relative of, oh, good God, Cormac McLagan. So, oh, lovely. Basically, Cormac is um, kind of like the heir of Gryffindor himself. Great. But, um... <laughs> Personally, I think Harry's probably a more legitimate, more legitimate heir, but who knows? Um, so, so <laughs> you've got that. Um, but basically, we end up finding out that Grisha was actually Voldemort in disguise all along, and even though, as Grisha, she's actually telling the story of everything that's happening while in the um, from the viewpoint of Grisha while actually being Voldemort and under Verita Serum, which I don't know how she man he managed to do that and trick the potion, but he managed to. This was a really confusing but really interesting and really well done fan film. I'm actually interested to see what else this studio comes up with and produces in the following months and years. I mean, wow. Hey, here's an idea. Do stuff with the next generation, okay? Do stuff with James <laughs> Albus Severus and, um, you know, do something with the next generation of Potters, you know? Have Albus Severus Potter and something else. I mean, do something interesting. Granted, we've already got that in kind of in the form of um, the Cursed Child, but maybe, you know, don't take this, that as canon. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this film if you decide to watch it. If you're a fellow Potterhead, I've got the link down in the description for you. Go ahead and go on over, check it out. Have some fun. Have some fun and just suspend your disbelief for a bit and enjoy a film that may not be the math, the um highest level technical in the technical realm but definitely is far and above any gra any general fan film that I've seen in years anyway thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys have a great day and i will see you guys again in the next video thanks so much for watching and check out that again please make sure to check out the fan film it is awesome